And welcome back to Real News Michiana's weekly Real News Roundup. I'm your host, Ben, and this guy over the right of your screen. His preferred pronouns are him, his, majestic beard, journalist, and ass kicker. This is none other than the editor and the founder of Real News Michiana, Clifton French. How's it going on this Saturday afternoon? How's it going? Hey, it's going well, Ben. Um... Thank you for putting out my pronouns. I now feel validated. Just in case anybody was wondering. <laughs> Bearded lady is the next one. Yes. Who will go there? <laughs> I, don't offend, I don't want to offend any bearded ladies. <laughs> so, anyways, um, before we get started, please like and subscribe to this channel. Share this video. Smash that like button, okay? And comment mm. below. And especially, especially if you disagree, I like to talk to people that disagree with me. Those are the fun ones, right? <laughs> Those are the fun ones. And and also, subscribe to realnewsmachina.com. Mm -hmm. Go on there. You're going to see the link right below this video. Subscribe. That's how we keep this real news coming straight to you. That's what allows Clifton, the majestic bearded warrior over here, to continue to do his thing. Hey, Ben, it's $0.30 cents a day, $9. $9 a month, $0.30 cents a day. $0.30 cents a day. That's it. And it's having an impact on local mm -hmm. politics. Absolutely. It's having an impact. We are starting to see change around here. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Clifton, for bringing that to us every day. I, I appreciate it, Ben. Well, let's getting, get started. Yep. Getting into things. Our first story of the day, St. Joseph Health System. They cut nurses' pay because they claim COVID is now an endemic. It's an endemic now. <laughs> it's still around. It's not it's a big still deal. Around, yeah. It's still around. It's not a big deal. Cut uh, nurses' pay. Weren't, now, weren't nurses a hero? Just, weren't they the hero? Oh, hero like a year and a half, two years yeah. ago, they were the heroes. Hero to zero. The heroes. Now, what's <laughs> happening now? So, um, yeah, by the way, they still have to wear masks. So that's... What? Yeah. Why do they still got to wear masks if it's endemic? If, yeah, they lost their... I thought, you know, they're losing their pay. Obviously, the masks have been so helpful. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing, the man. Hero. So the hospital has to pay for all the masks still. Oh, um, and so they just have to cut the nurses' pay. That's oh. so. Anyway, um, perfect, got, makes perfect, perfect sense. <laughs> so I got, I, I get this, I get this tip, um, and it, essentially, like it, you know, staffing problems are a major issue across the country, right? They have been uh, since since COVID, and or even even a little bit pre-COVID. They just got much worse when we started paying people to stay home and not work. So Imagine you know, that. a creative way of, of getting people to work and not stay home while you're, while you're simultaneously terrifying people while telling them they need to stay home, right, um, was, hey, you have to stay home, but don't stay home because we're going to pay you more, right? So they, they, they introduced all this stuff, um, these, these extra incentives. However, what I'm being told is that not only are they cutting those extra COVID incentives, they're cutting other pay as well. So what nurses are telling me from St. Joseph healthcare system, right? From St. Joseph, St. Joseph health is that they are going to be making less than they were making pre COVID. Um, now the hospital system isn't saying that COVID it, and, and by the way, enjoy your property tax hike. You know, my taxes went up here 81% in my house, my property taxes, 81%. Um, and Dang, so, now, now listen, listen, you can't mention that at a school board meeting or you might get arrested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to have freaking Mr. Thacker knocking on my door with a sheriff. With the Gestapo. Me, <laughs> take, taking me home. Take oh, him. <laughs> Speaking the truth, how dare you? So, so anyway, they, you know, they're going to have uh, this extra, these extra taxes are going to have, they're, they're paying whatever for gas, for food, you know, enjoy your inflation, enjoy your higher taxes. Um, thanks for being a trooper uh, during COVID. Here's your pay cut. Uh, honestly, it's a slap in the face with these nurses. Um, it's bad policy all around that is causing these issues. Um and, uh, I, you know, my heart goes out to these people because whether, you know, whether you think it or not, um, of, you know, whatever you think about COVID during this whole thing, these people were stalwart, man. They were 
Um, they were they were strong. They've taken care. I mean, if you've ever been in the hospital or, or had family in the hospital, and then you've dealt with, uh, I mean, the nurses are the ones who are doing the work. Um, Absolutely. You know, they, don't, they may not have the MD, but they're the ones doing the work. They deserve the pay. Um, honestly, they deserved they deserved more pay to begin with, and and these hospital systems should be thinking about them regardless. So it's a slap in the face to them. It's a slap in the face for all the hard work they've done. And, uh, you know, I feel for them. Now, I did have somebody post on one of my stories, though, saying, hey, listen, um, you know, at our organization, we're not we're not we're not cutting pay um, and we're increasing pay. And we love our nurses. So come work for us. Uh, go ahead. Check it out and see what they have to pay. I'm not going to I'm not going to name this organization, but. Um, go to my story at realnewsmichiana.com. You may have a job opportunity there. You know, um, as you know, Clifton, both my sister and my sister-in-law are both hardworking nurses. Are they? I can tell you from firsthand experience, they bust their ass. Oh, yeah. They God work hard, you. man. They work some crazy hours. And uh, this is really, really a slap in the face. And it's in shame on you, St. Joseph mm -hmm. County. Hey, well, and I, and I'm, shame I'm, on you. I'm, I'm told that this is happening across the country right now. Um it's it's bullshit. That's it. Yeah. So on to the next story. I use health <laughs> hospital chaplain rabbi says F you to Christians. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's this guy? What's this about? I don't know. I mean, you know, apparently he's not taking a pay cut. Um Obviously. Or, losing, or losing his job or anything like that. Um, you know, his Christian nurses, he's he's happy that they're losing pay cut. So, uh, or they're losing their pay. So, so this, this chaplain, by the way, Ben, IU Health is the largest employer in the state of Indiana. Okay. Um, this guy is a chaplain at the hospital in Indianapolis for IU Health. Uh, his name is Mike Harvey. This guy is a rabid, rabid, um, pro abortion advocate. Okay. Um, he's a chaplain for IU Health and, a few hours after the story from Politico broke about the leak of that draft opinion that would overturn Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey decisions, um, he went on this Twitter rant. He says, F Christians and their never-ending imperialistic, nationalistic, uh, fascist patriarchy that puts people's lives at risk and doesn't give a shit what anyone or science says. Shame on all you who hold the cross. 2,000 years of genocide continues tonight. F you. He spells out the whole word. And he posted that at 2.13 a.m. on March 3rd. That was five hours after the uh, the news of the Supreme Court leak came out. Um, he, he just, but he keeps going on. Just rant after rant. Uh, next, next tweet. So apparently there are Catholics walking around thinking that many Jews despise Jesus. Where is this taught? Why would we even care about a 2,000-year-old dead false messiah? We couldn't care less. His followers, on the other hand, we've taken some issue with over the years. Then, he's like many of the leftists right now, he calls for violence. Time to go to war for our mothers, sisters, and daughters. We will not stand by and allow a group of white Christians to turn America into the Dark Ages. Not this time. Um, <laughs> this guy is insane. He is, he is a rabid rabbi leftist um, madman, madman. So I reach out to IU Health. I ask IU Health, hey, you know, what's going on with all this? Can you guess what their response was, Ben? Oh, I said nothing to see here. He's one of us. <laughs> We're going to promote him. He's going to run all of IU Health. It doesn't, so like any good leftist, uh, his Twitter, he claims his Twitter account was hacked. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> it was hacked. hacked and he's removing the content because it does not align with IU health values. All right. So I send, I'm just going to read the email that I sent to, to IU health in response to that. Once they, they sent that over to me, I said, thank you for your response. Is there any follow-up to that claim that it was hacked or is IU health just taking him at his word? Do we know who hacked his account? If indeed that is the truth. It seems to be a pretty big coincidence that such an outspoken pro-abortion advocate was hacked and then goes on a rant attacking people who disagree with him on the issue within hours of the Roe news. Um, obviously, I'm going to go out and say it right now. This guy wasn't hacked. He's a liar. Um, he's, he's, he's trying to protect his job. 
Um, he needs to be fired. He, there is, there is, I mean, I would never say anything like this about any faith, uh, about any racial group, about anybody, period. This guy legitimately hopes Christians die. He hopes people die because of their faith, because of their ethnicity, because of their race. Um, he wants white Christians to perish. That's it. You know that in New York City, uh, more black children are killed in abortion than are born every year. Um, however, New York, New York State, right, has such lax abortion laws um, that it's much easier to get an abortion than it is, say, in, in Indiana or, or other places. So, yeah, I mean, the most dangerous place for a black youth in New York is, is, is their mother's womb. He doesn't mention any of that. Truly sad. He just, he just wants to eat. I mean, he, he loves the, he loves eugenics. The, <laughs> this guy who's going on this whole rant um, about apparently Christians committing genocide, well, that's exactly what he's promoting. He's promoting the eugenics and genocide uh, of, a, of a race of people. That's all he's doing. Yeah, he's carrying on. He's carrying on Margaret Sanger's legacy, who mm -hmm. used to speak regularly at Klan meetings. By the mm -hmm. way, yeah, I yeah. guess that I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, this whole th this whole talk about the party switching sides. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he he falls right in line with Hitler right now. Absolutely. On to the next story. The final story of the week: St. Joe County officials discover multiple keys made for secured absentee ballot area. They are extra Republican keys held by Democrats. Yeah. What a coincidence. Yeah. So extra security keys for mm -hmm. these ballots are held by not Republicans, but Democrats. Yeah. What? So Ben, let me describe to you Indiana law, okay? Correct. So the, the two political parties in power, it's always going to be Democrats or Republicans unless there's some, you know, crazy outlier, right? Um there is a law that the two political parties in power um, each have a key, a separate lock and a separate key and a secured area where absentee ballots are held. So the only way that you can get the, the thought is the only way that you can get into this secure area where these absentee ballots are being held is if a Republican key holder and a Democrat key holder are both there to open it and to lock it. All right. Well, what we have in St. Joe County is apparently there are six or seven keys floating around that the Republicans had no clue about. None. The most That's... safe, secure election in our country's history. <laughs> so, so this whole thing started where um, the, 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 the Republican key holder, there was a little bit of confusion, and the Republican key holder did not know um, that he was supposed to be you know, to, there to open the door at a certain time. Um, he was actually in a job. He's an attorney and he was in a job. He's a, he's a young attorney, um, just past the bar. And he was in a job interview. So they're calling him. He can't answer the phone. And the, the Democrat, uh, St. Joseph County circuit court clerk decides to go ahead and just open it up with a key that, she oh, worry, I, got you, I got you covered. Yeah. So where did that key come from? So this turns into at the at the last um, election board hearing, uh, this turns into a huge issue. Right. So there I mean, uh, the Republicans are just going, what the hell is going on at that meeting? They learn not only is there what what the Democrat clerk Rita Glenn claimed to be a master key. There were at least two more, if not three more keys that are just floating around the county city building, all in the hands of Democrats, all of them. By the way, when uh, when the clerk, so the clerk said, hey, listen, I did my job. I did what my sworn duty was. I grabbed this master key and I had a Republican from my office go with me to unlock the door. So I had a Republican doing it, right? That person wasn't a Republican either. That person's name is Helen Jojo. Apparently she works in the clerk's office. Um, I did a quick search of her voting records because that's how you determine in the state of Indiana somebody's political affiliation, right? Mm -hmm. She has voted in zero Republican primaries. In fact, the only primary she's ever voted in was a Democrat primary. 
What? She is not a Republican by Indiana statute. So. I mean, she identified as a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> that was her pronoun. That was her pronoun, Clifton. So for the, I mean, dude, this should terrify anybody. Now, once again, there is no evidence right now that anything was done, right? There's no evidence that anything bad was done during this primary election, right? Um, but those ballots are not secure. They are not. I'm going to name off the people who have the Republican keys. Ben Horvath, he's a Republican election board chair. He was the chosen person to have the official key holder, right? The chosen person to have that key by the Republican Party. Another person, Penny Stratton, election clerk and employee of the St. Joseph County Circuit Court. She is a registered Democrat. Brian Davidson, he is a St. Joseph County buildings engineer. Now, he did vote in one Republican primary in 2020. Other than that, he has voted in multiple Democrat primaries. He is a Democrat, okay? In order to be considered a Republican, you need to vote in uh, in two, in order to run as a Republican, right? You either have to have a, a waiver from the Republican Party, from the chair, or you have to vote in two consecutive Republican primaries. He is not a Republican. At this point, it looks like he's a Democrat with all the Democrat primaries he's voted in. Um, there are also multiple Democrat keys floating around held by the same people, um, including Rita Clinton, right? So they're held by a bunch of Democrats too. The issue comes to the wording of, of Indiana statute, okay, with this double lock system. Um, obviously, the intent of this law is to maintain election integrity um, and that, you know, one person and one party has this key, the other per person, the other party has this key. You look at the law, it looks like it should only be one key. However, the law never says there can or cannot be more than one key, right? Um, the intent is there. The Democrats are cheating. Um, and, and even though they may not have done anything, they set themselves up for an opportunity to do something. They are, they're, they're stacking the deck. They're stacking the deck in their favor just in case they have to do it. If they have an In case effect. these school board members might lose their power. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Maybe we just uncovered their entire strategy on hanging on to power because clearly, clearly they're not listening to their constituents. They're locking them up. Well, ben, Maybe this ben, was their strategy to stay hang on to power after all. Who knows? Well, Ben, there's even, out there. there's even more to this, right? So I'm being told by by folks who have who have gone and 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 uh or who have talked to folks who have gone and looked at uh, the room where this stuff is held, right? Where these absentee ballots are held. So <laughs> apparently the room is uh, partitioned off, okay? With a removable partition wall. But, you know, have you ever been to an event venue where they have like an accordion or a sliding wall, right? Yep. Yeah, you have a, a door with these two locks. However, if you go into a room over, you can just potentially slide the wall. This is like the Bruce, the Bruce Wayne estate. This is how Batman, this is how Batman gets into his suit. Like, what are we do? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> so you have this door with these two locks. Okay, yeah. But if you wanted to, so there's a there's a server room for um you know computer servers, right? There's a server room. Um, <laughs> all you have to do is go into the server room, go behind some racks, and push the wall over, and you can get right in. Wow. <laughs> it's not secured at all. It's not secured at all. And, I, and of course, I'm sure um, <laughs> I'm sure um, all the local media outlets already reported on this. We're probably late to the show, I'm assuming. Uh -huh. Clifton. Yeah. So ABC 57, they're, they've been all over this. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure they've been reporting this, and they're they're trying to get some election integrity going on here. Of course, yeah, it's, it's, it's it, dude. There's so much stuff that's about to come out um, on this on this issue. It's it's unreal. I mean, this is we're going to be allowed to. Hey, more importantly, we're going to be allowed to even talk about it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that 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 any election was stolen. Hey, by the way, somebody somebody said Trump. What did they they mentioned on my Facebook. They said Trump won or Trump lost. Get over it. I was like, this has nothing to do with Donald nothing Trump. Nothing to do with that. No. This has nothing to do with Donald Trump. And by the way, like Donald Trump won Indiana, right? Like, right. Huh. No, this is our a local this these are our local elections that are being impacted here. Right. And that could be impacted here. So we're not talking about the president. I mean, I guess those votes could potentially be altered too, right? No, we're we're talking about our clerk, right? 
the Democrat clerk who has all these keys that she has access to and knows people who she has access to, right? She is an elected official. Well, the way, the way to water that down, the way to downplay it is to say, oh, your conspiracy theorist, Trump, 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 Trump. That's the way to yeah. water that down because they have no facts. They yeah, have there's no, no facts to represent their side. Yeah. yeah, there's no, I mean, this exists. These keys exist. There is <laughs> there are all these. Oh, random... You're a QAnon conspiracy theorist. <laughs> no, this, this is this is a local level. This is yeah. a local issue that we're talking about. And on top, I mean, I have like these these meetings are public. I have recordings of these meetings. All of this stuff is public information. So there's more to come with this story. Oh my lord, Ben! This is just going to be the story that keeps on giving. This is going to be like the Alive Grant stuff. <sighs> Once again, I don't want to say that something bad has happened or not. They have given themselves the opportunity, and I believe um, knowingly given themselves the opportunity to do something wrong if they needed to. Why else would you do this? All you have to do is look at Indiana. But just You can go to my story at realnewsmichigan.com, and you can read Indiana Code yourself or Google it. It's IC Code 3-11-10-10. Read it, and tell me if that looks like there should be multiple keys floating around. And if they are, like all of them being in one party's hands, it's insane. Um, and and it, there, it is obvious corruption. I asked for statements from the Republicans, from the Democrats, and from Rita Glenn, the uh, the the county clerk, and none of them responded. Right? Um, Shocker. I, I think I think everybody's trying to honestly. I think the Republicans are just trying to figure out what's going on before they they issue a response. I think the Democrats know that they've done something wrong and don't want to say anything. And I think Rita Glenn is trying to protect herself from getting hemmed up by uh, the attorney general's office because that could be very, very bad. It's yeah. And by the, and, and, and full disclosure, I like Rita Glenn. I like her. Get along with her. Yeah. I don't, I don't know or like any of them I'm kind of new to the area. I think they're yeah. all corrupt. But anyways, <laughs> it's just me. But anyways, yeah. um, the, the, um, the, the drama is setting in. Mm -hmm. um, the plot thickens for the midterm elections coming up. Yep. The plot thickens. These stories will be coming out more and more frequently yep. as the election gets closer. So stay tuned to Real News Michiana for more updates on this story and more stories like it. That Go and subscribe. RealNewsMichiana.com. Subscribe. subscribe. You'll get all this stuff coming right into your inbox. When you do that, you'll get commentary from me. Um, and, and you're going to be supporting you know, actual journalism instead of you know, puppy parades and, and kitten vaccinations. Clifton, it's been real. Yeah. Real news. So, <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Anyways, All right. as always, stay informed, folks, and subscribe to realnewsmachina.com.